Tom Yum Goong, by the way, is not served in the Promised Land because the Promised Land, starring Mads Mikkelsen, is set in 18th century Denmark, specifically, I believe, 1755. I, I, I it could be wrong, but Mads Mikkelsen, we all know how what a great actor he's. A, I mean, you could just name what is it, Hannibal? What what else? Riders of Justice. The list goes on and on regarding movies that he's great in. He's fantastic in this movie. And he plays this guy named Captain Ludwig Kallen. And Captain Ludwig is retired from the service. 25 years in, he's collecting a pension. And instead of going off and just seeing a plot of land that's farmable, he decides to go on this uninhabitable land called the Heath, set up stakes, and he plans to farm a mis- some mysterious crop that he's keeping to himself. The problem is the heath literally is supposedly unfarmable. Even though it's the king's country, this captain is going to invest his money on the land. Everything should be okay. It's sort of a a fool's errand. The problem is he's doing everything by the book, but his next door neighbor across the way is this guy named Frederick Deschinkel. And he's a merciless nobleman who will do anything in his power to pretty much get our protagonist, Captain Ludwig, off the property. First of all, that shink, the shinkle, that land is not his. That's the land, the property of the people. Of, of the, It's the property of the king. And if you farm it, it becomes yours. So the captain's in the right, and this nobleman is in the wrong. And it's sort of a battle of wills between them. That's one of the elements. But ultimately, it's Captain, Captain Ludwig Collins, just his journey into trying to make this land farmable, livable, and he wants to have a bunch of settlers come in and to make the Heath a livable community. Not because he's a nice guy or a saint. He wants to become just like the Schinkel. He wants to become a nobleman because he carries himself, even though his uniforms, is it's ragged, even though his hands are rough and rugged from just working the earth, he sort of envisions himself as a nobleman as well. So there's a lot of elements at play. There's also some really interesting performances. Bruce and Eric will talk about them. There's a young girl who is fantastic in this movie, and she is sort of an outlier, and she becomes part of his extended family. And then there's other different characters who pop in and out of his life. We also want to mention Amanda Collin from the HBO series Raised by Wolves. She plays a woman. Uh, I forgot who plays her husband, but... They're a married couple. They're actually on Ludwig's land to help him just make the earth livable. But they have a past of their own. So that is the premise of The Promised Land. A lot to to sink in. 127 minutes. Epic filmmaking. Only in theaters this Friday. Eric Holmes. Is this movie at 127 minutes a slog? Is it worth watching in theaters? What is your overall take on The Promised Land? No, and absolutely. This is uh, written and directed by Nicolaj Arso. I believe that's how you pronounce it. They directed... Well, the last movie they co-wrote was Riders of Justice, which is great. Last movie they directed was The Dark Tower, which is one... Like, had The Snowman not come out that year, that would have been, like, one of the worst movies of the year. I'm kind of curious. Like, watching this movie, I'm like, what the hell went wrong with The Dark Tower? It's like, Riders of Justice is great. This movie's fantastic. Like, dude knows how to crank out bangers, so uh, what happened there? But we're not talking about the Dark Tower, just something I thought I'd bring up. You got Mads Mikkelsen, who kind of going through stuff. Like, he, he doesn't do, like, a lot. Like, just his acting style is, like, just seems stoic most of the time. You know when you watch a movie and it's nothing happens, but then, like, a, a you know, a spike of violence happens, so now... All of a sudden, it kind of shakes you. That's kind of how his acting style is on. It's like, especially like towards the end when, not towards the end, but like towards close to the end when a thing, someone's leaving. And then, you know, his eye kind of twitches a bit. And then I start crying like a movie podcaster, I guess. Deschinkel, probably one of the best villains. He's on the level of Percy in the Green Mile, but he's like dangerous. Like Percy's just a guy you would just want to choke the crap out of and because he's such a worm. The Shinkle guy, he's a worm, but he's a worm with power and he's dangerous. Then you have the whole thing with the the taters or like the, I think that's what they called them, the hermits or the the group of people. That yeah, there's a whole of... element in the promised land where there's there's the whites, there's a people in who are in Denmark, the inhabitants, 
Yeah. And also the outliers. The what and they, so and so like all the political intrigue between like all them and how all the all the machinations of that goes together. And then of course their superstition. Probably one of my favorite characters in this, and my moose. It was subtitled, so every time it popped up, I just kept thinking animal mouse because she's cute like a mouse. When when Bruce watched it before I did, he mentioned Pemzan. He was not wrong. Love it's like and foul my mouse. mouth. Foul mouth Pemzam. Yeah, <laughs> the Pimzam. Job who plays the girl that Eric was talking about. She she becomes part of that captain's. She becomes an important part of the captain's life. So that is played by Melina Hagberg, and she's fantastic in this movie. Also, the aforementioned De, whatever his name is. What is it? The Shingle or the Schindler? Or what the, the Shingle? Uh, the Shingle. Simon Bene 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 yeah Bene Jerg or something. He's very very good. So just excellent these acting these all around. Started. What? Oh, I, I should have learned these names before we started. That's right, oh, sorry. and then there's a, the whole deal with uh, Mad Mick, Mads Mikkelsen's character and the, uh, what was she like? Uh, what? Not quite a duchess of uh, Schinkel. She's Schinkel's cousin, which is weird enough, but. Yeah, like, there's another woman of royalty, and she is a person who is going to be betrothed, married to the Schinkel. And yeah. She has other ideas because she realizes what a complete a hole the shingle is and she wants a different life for herself well so. her and mads are well shoot maybe we shouldn't get into that whole that the whole kind of relationship that kind of goes and kind of falls apart there is interesting i don't know if we should talk about it but that's up to you guys uh because yeah, because sure. uh, uh, it. it would involve a spoiler to right yeah no spoilers. It is. no spoilers the person who plays that woman that noble woman who is promised to that the shingle guy she is played by Christine Kuja to Kuja Thorpe. And we might have you might know her from a movie, an action thriller from 2021 called The Burning Sea. She was the lead actress in that. And that she was great in that movie. And she's great in this. Actually, there's so many actors in this movie who deliver really good performances. It's an epic. It's really an epic. Bruce, your thoughts on the movie? Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree. I mean, when I watched this, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't wait for you guys to watch it. And I hope that you'll love it as much as I did. This is a hard movie because this is a movie when you describe it, it doesn't sound as good as it is. You know what I mean? Like you're like, oh, he's out there and he's trying to grow things on this land and there's some evil landowner loner, and people will be like, okay, this sounds kind of dry. It sounds like a masterpiece theater if you want to go back to old style, something you maybe not know about anymore. Um, but this period piece and all these things, it just doesn't sound, I say to me, the best way to think of it for people who are experienced with Game of Thrones, when Game of Thrones was operating at its best, it operated in this kind of sphere where you've got really clear stakes. You have people in power that are petulant and will wield their power in really cruel ways and really petty ways. And you have really great people to root for. And what I really love about the Mads Mikkelsen character is he is really bad in a lot of ways. Like he's, he's got his own pettiness in a, to it in a sense. He's super oh, stoic. Yeah. He has his rules. He has his goals and nothing's going to get in his way. And his whole point is, and I don't know if we mentioned this specifically, but he is a, a bastard son of a nobleman. And it's taken him, whereas a nobleman will get to his captain position in like, I don't know, they say like a, a six months. months. Yeah, yeah. A few months. It took him like 20 years or something. To 25 years. Yeah. So his goal to become a noble by getting this land developed is kind of his way to like reclaim his identity and to feel like he matters. And that is at odds with a whole bunch of other interpersonal things that are happening throughout this movie. And there are so many great stakes and so many great side characters and some real moments of high melodrama and not melodrama. There's some just straight up drama. There are some great moments I'd love to discuss and I can't discuss. And I would just say there are at least three, three moments of violence that are just key to the story and have emotional punches. And I don't even want to talk about how they punch because that would tell you something about how the story is going. And I also think the ending of this movie there's an ending that's fantastic, or I would say there's a, a climax of something that happens to a character you've been waiting to happen to a character that is amazing. And then there's kind of a, kind of an epilogue sort of, yeah, which is also hugely satisfying, I believe. Powerful. For, for the characters you've been rooting for or not mm -hmm. rooting for throughout the movie. And once again, you can't overestimate the, the girl's role in this. It's, it's fantastic. I, I love this movie so much. This is easily... The best new movie i've seen this year so far easily. i agree 
Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's easy. Yeah, Eric. Oh, I I would point out, I think a, a lot of what drives this story is the Shinkle character. Yeah. Because he's such he's such a hateable person that yeah. you just want Mads Mikkelsen to just choke the crap out of him. It's like just kick the he's kick the ever living yeah. crap out of this guy. And then and then yeah, well, okay. And then things so happen. Doesn't you can, happen. Yeah. And then some, there's there's things that happen. It's very interesting. Uh, I really love this movie so much. What also drives the story is what what is Ludwig's perception of a dream? What is his dream? Is his dream really to become a nobleman? Bruce, you mentioned the I, when the shingle says, "Hey, it only took me six months to get this noble ranking, and it took you twenty five years." And what Ludwig says is, "Yeah, that's about right. That's the law." So at the beginning. He is actually on his tormentor's side because he is living by the law of the land. He realizes that noblemen get the fast track over him and he's fine. It's a perfect thing like a soldier would do, right? So then as the narrative progresses, you realize Ludwig has is presented with other options rather than his own straight ahead focused thing, which is very important because if he's not focused, the heath may not be able to grow right? He needs that strength. But then there are other elements that may make Ludwig, that might change his philosophies a little bit, which I thought, which you actually wonder what really is the promised land. Love this movie. Five stars for me. Yes, Eric. Well, you say that, you know, becoming the noble or whatever is his dream. Um, I think that's kind of true. And without getting into it, I think he finds things that like you always have, like when you're writing a story, what does the character want? And he yeah. wants to he wants to become a baron. land and become a baron, baron and stuff. Yeah. But I think in doing that, there's other things that he wants more than that. But he's so focused on that that he kind of destroys other parts of his own life. Of course, yeah. And, and you know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to say here, yeah. but yeah, I I think I think that's kind of the bigger the bigger message of this movie is like don't be so you know don't be so focused on what you're doing that you miss out on these greater things that that come from that. Yeah. Well, and this is to me such a great example of where you have a really complex character arc, more than one, but I mean, his is like the core one, right? But in the middle of a broadly entertaining epic story, it's such a key thing to think about. Like you don't see both of those together in movies a lot. And it's just, if they just do it, it's such a great, like this is entertaining on its, on its face without having that character arc, but having that character arc just gives it that depth and just makes it, it makes it so awesome and so rewarding to watch as a viewer, because not only do you have those excitement moments and the, the kind of plot, either achievements or downfalls, but you have this character that you are so invested in along with the others. I, there's at least for me, there's one you're very negatively invested in, and there's at least three others that you're fully invested in. You know, if you're counting uh, Kalen as one of them, it's it's just fantastic. And e- even the smallest characters are well etched. Where you, when mm-hmm. you see them, even for a few seconds, you go, "Oh, okay, that's." I remember when you did that. Okay, so e- all the little ones are are pretty good too. And Bruce, you were mentioning some of the violent moments or some of the standout moments. This is also a genre film. There are things genre wise or visually that you will not get out of your head after watching the promise that and I'm, I'm not i'm not talking about sweeping vistas of the land just bruce it just it well, operates more like a western yeah than it does like a period piece i mean it, westerns are period pieces too you know what i mean though yeah this doesn't seem this doesn't seem as much like a lords and ladies kind of period piece as it does like a western that's just in a totally different setting than you're used to seeing as far as the kind of vengeance and evil guys and people trying to stoic figures all that stuff is in there okay so that is the promised land friday february 2nd easy easy five stars for me final thoughts on the promised land eric and then your rating five stars go watch it it's awesome bruce five five five, five. Five, five stars for all of us. The Promised Land, it's in theaters. So if it's playing near you, please see it. I, I think I, this is one of those movies where- look, I We'll be it talking on. about it exactly a year from now in our yep. collective top five. Yep. I hate to say that. That's such a, that is such an accurate thing, what, what Eric said. Eric is trying to mention that The Promised Land is one of those movies that may be buried and we're going to have to bring it up a year later. And I feel bad because Eric's right. Eric's absolutely right. But- if you heed our advice, five stars from all of us, best film I've seen this year so far. I don't know if Eric can co-sign on that. Eric, from your noggin, is there anything else that you've seen? Uh, last Mayhem month? and One More oh. Shot. 
Wow. Okay. But okay. I mean, this is up Fair. there with those. Okay. Mayhem, one more shot. The Promised Land. That, that's a great list from Eric. Yeah. Let's just say, again, guys, can you uh, just co sign in theaters or should they wait on digital? Why Why should they see it on, in theaters, Bruce? What do you think? Well, I mean, it's a pretty great looking movie. And I think that the emotions are hit me pretty good just on my little screen watching it at home. And I can imagine seeing it on a big screen with all the music and everything. I This, this feels like it would hit pretty hard on a, on a big screen. It hit me pretty hard. Almost made me a better person. Fellow Cinematics members, if you ever see me and try to throw a branch or stick my way, don't expect me to pick it up. I'm not that kind of guy. But I'm, I, I still like the movie. I still like the movie. Bruce and Eric, they're 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 a stick picker uppers. They're nice guys. So I, I, you're gonna get that reference in a second. There but, was a there was a real up moment at that yes. part. Yes. Or it's, like, or it's like, oh yeah, like a little crying, a little crying there. Okay, yeah. Which, it, that that was actually a happy tears because there's so many sad tears in this as well. Yeah. That This just runs, like, you get all the feels, like good and bad, like happy and sad, all that stuff. Angry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely angry. <laughs> Sticks are used for kindling, not building relationships. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, that is it for The Promised Land. The, tell us, please, if someone is listening, tell me, Eric and Bruce, hit us up. If you if you see the movie, let us know what you think. 